Hey everybody, Mo here, and welcome to the fourth episode of my Think Like a Pro series. At least I think it's the fourth episode, I'm not quite sure. So today I'm going to be talking about aggressive decks, aggro decks, and how you become a better aggro player in general. So, aggro decks are personally my favorite. Most of my top finishes at Magic events were with some sort of aggressive style deck, and it's also my most played archetype. I know that during Legends of Runeterra beta, I actually mostly played a control deck, being the Anivia Trindamir deck. However, my most preferred archetype and most preferred deck that I've played just in general in most card games tends to be a more aggressive style deck. So I'll probably be trying to find the best aggro deck in Legends of Runeterra and be trying to grind that super hard once the meta kind of figures itself out. But back to the video. A lot of people think that aggro decks are kind of brain dead and that they don't take any skill. All you have to do is just sit there and attack with all your creatures every single turn, cast your damaging spells at your opponent's face. This is not exactly how you're supposed to play it. So this is probably the biggest and most common mistake people have when they're trying to play an aggressive deck at higher levels. It's just they get tilted because they lose against a red aggressive deck, or they get mad because they lose against Face Hunter, and they say, oh, that wasn't skillful, you're playing, you know, Burn, or you're playing Face Hunter, anyone can do that, let me pick up Face Hunter, and then, you know, you're in Legend rank, and you try and play Face Hunter against professionals, and you just get stomped because you don't actually know how to play aggressive decks, you kind of just get upset and throw all your cards in front of your opponent. And that's not really how you play it. So, hopefully by the end of this video, you guys... And learn the correct way or at least the better way to play aggressive decks at higher levels against better opponents and yeah so let's go ahead and jump right into it so the golden question you have to ask yourself when you're playing an aggro deck is how can i effectively use all of my cards to do the most damage so even though people you know like i said earlier say always go face is really simple and is a really easy plan to do there's a lot of scenarios where you don't actually want to attack with every single creature the turn you play them, or, you know, maybe you only want to attack with just a couple creatures to gain the most advantage while losing the least amount of creatures. Let's look at an example. Let's say your opponent has two 3-3s three on their side of the field, and you have three 2-2s two with two more 2-2s two in your hand, but you won't have the mana to play them until next turn. So, let's look at our possible attacks and see if we can effectively use our cards to do the most damage. Now before I tell you guys what does the most damage, go ahead and see if you can figure it out for a second. Okay, so if you attack with three 2-2s two on your board, your opponent can block two of them and they'll take two damage. And then the next turn, you can play the two 2-2s two two in your hand, and assuming your opponent doesn't play a creature, you're in the same scenario and you deal another two damage. So after using all of your cards and losing four creatures, you've dealt a total of four damage to your opponent. Now, let's rewind and see if there is a more effective way we can use our cards. Okay, so we're back to where we started. Let's decide not to attack with our three creatures this turn and wait until we can apply the two creatures in our hand. Next, let's assume, you know, our opponent didn't play creatures like we did the first example, and we play both of our units to attack. Now we're able to hit them for 6 damage, and we still have 3 units left over. So next turn, we can attack with everything again, and they'll take another 2 damage. So just by waiting that one extra turn on our initial attack, we were essentially able to double the amount of damage we did to our opponent with the same loss of 4 creatures total, after spending all of our cards. So that's just an example on how you can literally double the amount of damage you do, if you just wait one turn or if you just try to be a little bit more patient instead of just attacking every single turn with every single creature. So let's look at another example, but this time we're going to be holding a combat trick in our hand. So combat tricks are going to be anything you cast during combat, as in give your creature a barrier to make him survive a block. You give your creature a pump spell so they get bigger and deal more damage or survive you know, a block. Stuff like that. Those are combat tricks. Let's say you again have two 2-2s two on the board. Your opponent has a 3-3, three three, and you're holding a repost in your hand. You decide to attack with both creatures this turn, 
And now you have to make the decision. Do you use your repost to save the creature being blocked? Or do you use your repost to go ahead and buff the unblocked creature to get in for three extra damage? Well, if you decide to buff the unblocked creature, you get it in for five total damage. But in that process, you lose your second creature. Your opponent still has a creature on the field, and you can't effectively attack next turn without losing another creature and getting you know, two for one. If you instead decide to save your creature that got blocked with the repost, you'll only get in for two damage this turn. However, you'll still have your second creature, and your opponent lost their blocker, so that means next turn you can get in for another four damage, making the total damage done six. So... Not only did you get in for an extra point of damage, but you're also set up to do even more damage in the future turns because you still have two creatures on the board. So let's look at the last example we're going to look at for now is when is it better to just partially attack? Now, deciding to partially attack, you have to ask yourself, what is the risk of your attack? And what is the possible reward of your attack? Now, when... Doing this, I find the best way to answer these questions is to put yourself in your opponent's place to try to determine what are the best blocks you could have, or your opponent could have. So you sit there and you look at your board and you say, okay, if I was my opponent, I would block with this creature here because I would keep my creature and the attacker would lose their creature. And that way you just get a better understanding of maybe what your opponent's game plan is and what you should not do. Another thing to look for is if any of your creatures have abilities that give them some sort of evasion or make them really difficult to kill and permanently deal with. And depending on the board state, these creatures can often get in what is usually called free attacks. So this means that there's almost no risk at all and there's only reward because if your creature has evasive and they have no evasive creatures on the field, then you have zero to worry about them blocking it because none of the creatures have evasive. it only be for a few points of damage, but small damage is still damage. So let's look at this example, the last one, like I said. And let's say your opponent has a 4-5 on their side of the battlefield and you have the Undying and another small creature. So in this scenario, you can partially attack with just the Undying because of its ability. Now you can attack with both creatures, but what would more than likely happen is you would attack with the smaller creature and the undying. Your opponent would use their 4-5 to just block the small creature, and now you just kind of wasted a creature. You kind of just threw it away and said, hey, I don't care about this creature, I'm just going to let you block it and kill it for absolutely no reason. So typically, most opponents won't want to kill the undying since it only comes back bigger and stronger, and then it just makes it really difficult to deal with in the long run and in the end game. The more you block it, the more you kill it, then the bigger it gets and then eventually gets to the point where you have to block it and it gets so big to where it's killing all of your opponent's creatures. So the Undying is an example of cards that can typically get in free attacks because of the reasons I just mentioned. And here's just a few more examples of cards that can give you free attacks at least most of the time. The Abilities that creatures could have that you want to look for to possibly give you free attacks are creatures with quick attack, creatures with elusive, creatures with challenger, creatures with fearsome, creatures with some sort of recursion effect or effect that brings them back so your opponent has to consistently deal with them, and sometimes creatures with overwhelm. Now, I'll explain some of the non-obvious ones. So the creatures with Overwhelm, if their attack is really, really high, let's say you have a 10 power creature with Overwhelm, that's basically a free attack. So even if it's a 10-1, you know, 10 power and 1 toughness, so anything your opponent has can kill this creature when you attack. Let's say their biggest creature that they have has 5 toughness. You're still getting in 5 damage, at least 5 damage. And they can't really afford to block an overwhelm creature with a small creature because the smaller the creature that they block with, the more damage they take. So that's why overwhelm can be free attack sometimes. Now, there's an asterisk because it's not really free. You're, you could lose your creature. 
but it's free as in you get in free damage and it's really hard to deal with but like i said it's also only sometimes and it really just depends on the size of your creature and the board state all of these just decide on really get decided by the board state none of these are free attacks yeah, for instance elusive is very obvious you know elusive can only be blocked by creatures with elusive now in some decks that's completely free if you're playing against a shadow isle deck sometimes that's completely free if you're playing against the anivia trindamir deck they don't play any elusive cards so attacking with elusive creatures is free however if you're playing against another ionia deck or if you're playing against a deck that does have elusives in it your attacks aren't going to be you know free attacks anymore they're just going to be considered regular attacks now fearsome and challenger are also two that people might have questions about so challenger can give you free attacks in two different ways one if you have a larger creature with challenger you can decide what blocks it so you can decide to pull over a smaller creature with challenger and get in a free kill or if you have a really big creature that you want to hit your opponent let's say your opponent only has one blocker you could use a small challenger creature to pull that blocker over to make sure that your really big creature hits face and gets through and with fearsome fearsome doesn't come up quite as often because usually I see fearsome tacked on the larger creatures, but in the early game, if there's an early game fearsome creature, it could be very good because creatures don't typically have more than three power until about the four cost and five cost minions. So if you can play a unit before turn four or five, they can usually get in some free attacks and not be blocked very easily. Let's go ahead and get to the last point here. And another really common mistake aggro players make is by overextending into board wipes like avalanche and the ruination since in aggro decks we're trying to jam in as much damage as possible over the fewest amount of turns it's really tempting to try and just throw out every single card in our hand and swing for the fences however at legends of runeterra the way the turns play out is pretty unique both players get to play cards of all types meaning slows quicks creatures and yeah like your, your slow board wipes or the big ones, on each turn. This means that if you play a creature, your opponent now has the opportunity to play a card of their own. So it could be a creature to block, or it could be a slow board wipe, or another slow, um, I would want to call it sorcery type spell, like in Magic Gathering. So if you get a little bit happy and excited because you can say, oh, I can play these three creatures and kill my opponent, don't forget that after you play something, your opponent can respond by playing their own card so if your opponent has 13 mana and you decide oh i could kill them if i play out every card in my hand don't forget that once you play out that last card your opponent still has 13 mana and can wait for you to do that to then play the ruination and then just completely destroy your board state and now you have no cards in your hand you have no way to catch badak up and a lot of times, one good board wipe could completely destroy your game plan and momentum, and then you should probably just forfeit and go to the next game. The most success I've found while playing aggro decks during beta with the Legends of Runeterra turn style is by playing all of my creatures that I plan to attack with at the end of my opponent's attack turn. So this means, you know, if they have the attack token and they spend their mana playing creatures or spells, so they're down to low to zero mana, after they attack, you automatically get priority, so that I'll go ahead and play my three creatures, or my four creatures, at the end of their turn that they weren't expecting, and then when it goes to my turn, and I have the attack token, I can just immediately attack and not give my opponent the opportunity to cast a board wipe, or the opportunity to even cast a creature to block. This is really, really nice, but can also be kind of difficult, because... At the end of their turn, they can still play cards. So it's not like they attack and they can't play anything. So there's still the possibility of you play a creature or two, and then they can still play a creature to block it. But if they've used all of their mana already on their attacks, this is a really nice way that you can massively increase the amount of damage from your next attack. And you can bring in a lot of burst potential that your opponent didn't see coming and probably didn't prepare for it. You know, most players, especially in lower elo, will say, oh, my opponent only has 7 power on the board, and I'm at 12 health, so I can't possibly die. So I'm going to spend all of my mana drawing cards or something. And then now you go, I only had 7 power, but I'm going to play these 
three to four creatures and go up to 15 power you know add an additional six to seven power to your board that they weren't planning for so they spent all of their mana it gets to your turn and before they have a chance to react by casting their board wipe or their creatures to block you just go ahead and kill them that's uh that's probably the best way so far that i've been able to play with aggressive creature decks and legends of runeterra with their the way the way their turn style works out so that's gonna be it for this video i hope you guys learned something and enjoyed it I plan on making a video like this for all three of the major archetypes, so this is on aggro, the next two videos are going to be on control, and then your tempo style decks. Uh, leave in the comment which one you'd rather see first, and I'll try and get that one done for you guys. Uh, as always, I put out videos every Wednesday and Saturday, as well as I stream on Twitch Monday through Friday, so go follow me on there, subscribe here so you guys don't miss anything, and I'll see you in the next video.